Hey guys. Point and top, right? God, he is so stingy sometimes. Just doing this to burn some energy so that later I can finish out AQ, because I want my Odin out of it for the Cosmic Quest. Oh, we were just discussing the potion stuff. I think it was mostly pretty amicable. And then there was... Um... Oops. I guess I need to auto-fight this. Then there was a departure at some point to discuss... What was it? The role of the skill class and... The idea that maybe there should be other kinds of damage over time in it, not just bleed. Which also turned into a little bit of the silliness that happens whenever we um, discuss canon power levels. Yeah, let me just speed this up. No, uh, thanks. Hi, Executioner. Oldest pub in New York last night. Interesting. Sounds like it's probably fairly old. You can hear now, right, Executioner? If you don't have any audio at this point, then it is you. Got a six-star ghost? Nice. Congrats. Back to Cap. Finish that up for the bits and stuff later. Exorlies. I have heard of it, yeah. I 
I've only been to a few places in New York. I don't remember the names of all of them. Death and Company being the obvious one. All right, sounds like good practice. And then what do we need for the... I believe these two on the team. That lets Tigra nullify. We found out that doesn't really help Maw. I believe it helps Diablo. Doesn't really help Sigil Witch, but she hits hard enough here that that works fine. Doom's a good backup. You haven't heard of Death and Company Toffrey? It's a small, relatively high-end bar. It's a big deal in the bartending community, of which I used to be a part. Really nice drinks. Um, no reservation, so you usually just go up and like find a time. I like OG Black Panther Executioner. He's one of a like group of skilled champions that I wouldn't recommend to everyone because he's fairly skill dependent. Like he encourages you to take risks and is somewhat fragile if you mess up. But he's a ton of fun to play, and the kit is absolutely there. I would take him up over Black Widow unless you I don't know, specifically enjoy her and love shock damage. I feel like that special two would... Oh, unblockable. Duh. Like, shouldn't that have been doing more damage? But no. What? That's fine. I, I like getting practice against Nova. Player Sorcerer. That is a tough one, Executioner. And, in my opinion, a fairly personal call. Hey, Devil Dog. How's it going? Never go to the East Village? Gotcha. Yeah, I'd recommend it. Like, when we went there, we were told a 90-minute wait, which is somewhat typical. So you just, like, make other plans. There was a, um, like, a bubble waffle ice cream place nearby that was also on our list, so we went over there, and our table was ready early, so, like, 30 minutes later, we were walking back and had a good time. Just don't, like, because of the timing things, don't make it part of a really rigid night. As we were walking away after putting our names in, 
we saw a table of, or we saw a car of like six people who had clearly just come from the opera or something who were absolutely expecting that they could just waltz in and get a table and i swear i heard one of them say something about making it happen with money or whatever <laughs> It didn't fly terribly well. Morning, Bulls. How's it going? Ooh, chorizo and egg sounds good. I mean, this probably just kills him with the nine prowess, right? I should have just killed him with the special, too. Oh, guess not. That does, though. Hey, Steve. How's it going? Just saw Rob's war video with Slay Chugging Beer. Can confirm that was Aerosmith's <laughs> Steve. I still haven't seen that one. I've actually... Thanks for reminding me. I've been meaning to... One more. I think this does it. We'll see. Okay. Not quite. He is only a rank two. One second. Just took my six star Ultron to rank two. Very nice, Steve. Pretty's awesome. It was not Arizona nice, Steve. Nice lady. Need a few transfers to East Village. Yeah, I can understand that, Zafre. I can just put it on the long term list. That is New York for you. Yeah, sure. Have I noticed a difference in Scarlet Witch after Awakening? I don't play with her that much, so not really. Which is kind of what I expected. Like, all of the abilities are good. But unless you're facing Cosmics, you don't know what's actually going to proc, even at 5 instability, and even against Cosmics. It's only 3 out of every 4 seconds. I find, like, it... You can just never count on it actually lining up against, like, a power gain that you need to blunt with a Petrify, or a healing effect that you need to block. It's just... Like, it's a cute SIG ability. I don't think it really adds much to her character. Can use the Act 7 generic on Ghost and SIG up. Nice.
Oh god, that was dumb. I've done that before. Just push him to the special one. There we go. Stupid. Hey, Matt, how's it going? I just showed my girlfriend. She liked it, got excited about the drinks. Nice! Okay, well, if you do go, I hope you have a good time. Man. I can I can check with my girlfriend and see if she remembers the place of the, the ice cream joint that we walked to, if you're curious. Quick statement on how to play Cersei. Well, for one thing, Stover, um, Campo did make a, like, five-minute guide or something like that, so you can check that out. But the brief rotation is, I like like two, four or five hit combos, always ending in medium, to build some power, usually to about a bar, trying to have two or three transmutation buffs. Then you want to parry heavy, get that rolling, and do short, medium, medium combos, so that you get to two bars of power with as many transmutation buffs as possible, and immediately throw the special two to get those big furies. From there, um, you have a choice depending on how long the fight's going to go. If it's a long fight, then spam the special one from a distance to refresh the furies. And if it is a relatively shorter fight, you can push back up to the special two, throw it from a different distance, and uh, cash in on some healing. That's kind of the short version for Cersei. Yeah, Sarah Ghost. I, I basically just did it for kicks and giggles. Like it's it's fine, but it doesn't excite me at all. Um, her sake ability. I what was it? I think Kabam flat out told us that there's not going to be another Sigil champion for a while, and I figured I might as well have her awakened versus some other six star. Um, like even with the thought that they might add six-star crystals for credits to the store, so I'm just, yeah. I'm at peace with it, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it to anyone else. Yeah, Sarah goes, there are definitely ways in which it could be. But ultimately, I think that's fine, because there are some accusations that she's a pay-to-win champion, and I think that her sig not being terribly important blunts that a bit. Because it means that the the paywall to get her is not that high. You do the sigil for a while, um, and you get like 98% of her kit just by getting her once. And that makes me feel better about her being in the game. Hey, Cream Cheese, how's it going? Executioner says, I'm stuck now because I love Nimrod and I love Ghost. Having a rank 4 Ghost would be a flex. I mean... Honestly, Executioner, I just would not rank 4 Ghost right now. A large part of that is the alliance I'm in. Prestige matters to us, even though it's not the end, be all, end all, end all, be all. Um, and we focus on war, and Ghost is banned all the time and has awful prestige. Imrod is never banned and has amazing prestige. So I know what I would do, but whatever works for you, man. If you love playing Ghost and you want to have her at rank 4, go for it.
Why are you sure Nimrod is going to get banned a lot? Like, I've, I've seen it discussed, but I don't think it's anywhere close to an automatic. Yeah, like, Nimrod is particularly good on, like, two or three paths. But those are not the hardest paths, and they have a lot of other options. He doesn't just, like... Yeah, I, I don't see Nimrod bans as being great unless you're facing an alliance that's gone all in on Nimrod and has literally never heard of Guardian Guillotine 99, War Machine, Howard the Duck, like Omega Sentinel, anyone else who does those things. I, do, I don't think he's a great or even a, definitely not an automatic ban. Yeah, I agree, Matt. I think that list of six is probably still the top. Well, and one other. One seventh. You're up to Sig 60 on Hitmonkey top, right? That's rough. Yeah, you're doing great. I know I can't complain too much about mine. I got the two I wanted the most out of the feature, and I got them both duped. But I still really want Kitty. Yeah, Sarah Ghost. There's a reason I've never taken my ghost to rank 3. She's just sat at Sig 20, rank 2 for a long time. Yeah, Matt. That's the one. I probably should have brought one other counter for her, but eh, here we are. Okay, that was actually going well. I just... <clears throat> Great, we have yet another champion with a really quick cooldown after their special. Like, I know that can be punished, and I'm just not ready for it yet. But why does Kabam keep doing that now? Like, punish windows get tighter and tighter and tighter. It doesn't matter what the special is. I just don't love that. CGR does not get used a ton in war. He gets used, but not a ton. Morning, Cyber. How's it going? See people praising spam, can't get with them, have mine at rank 2, but it just feels like more and more lately that Kabam has coded the AI to wait status ailments out. I do know what you mean there. I like spam a lot, um, but I think for his kit to work... You really need to be comfortable with both of his taunts, Foles. Like, both the special one and, um... What's the other one on the... Get one on the Evade, right? Yeah, Black Cat will be in the next feature. Excuse me. Woke up five minutes ago. I'm doing good. Um, sad that I messed up the Jabari fight.
But I think part of my issue is that it's also... Like, hitboxes seem to have made it... much more difficult to dex out of things. Yeah, because, like, if that hits you, it seems really difficult to dex out of the next one. Okay, we need that cleanse on cooldown. Hey, Aiden, how's it going? Oh, thanks, Meta. That's what that was. It, the other taunt is on the evade. That's what I thought. I really do think that that's an important part of spam. Alright, you saw it here, folks. Diablo is one of the best black cat counters. That was actually incredibly simple, but I think I was also just playing it better. Oh, sorry, not the next featured map. I thought we were already talking about the next one. <laughs> sorry. I... The next featured will be Craven, Toad, Sauron, Captain Sam, Misty, and Captain Britt. So yeah, you're right. The She's in the one after that. I just, I've been, people have been talking about that next featured of six for so long that I already was like, oh yeah, the next one is the one after that, which doesn't make sense, but that's what was going on in my head. Yeah, the way I said it um, the other day about Black Cat is that, to me, she feels like... Um, she feels like uh, Tigra reimagined as a skill champion. And I say reimagined, not just translated to skill, because there are a lot of utility changes. Like, she doesn't have buff control, she doesn't have... Um, the unblockable special. She doesn't have a lot of the thing. She doesn't have the power gain. She doesn't have a lot of the things that characterize mystics. But a lot of the play style, a lot of the a lot of the things you have to do to bring her abilities to bear remind me of Tigra, and the abilities that she has are very flavorful for the skill class. The ability accuracy reduction, the cleanse, the bleed, the big crits. All of that makes sense, so I really... Yeah, I definitely want her. She looks like a ton of fun. I just don't agree, Matt. I think that the next featured is being pretty badly underrated. I think a lot of people are going to skip it, but I think a lot of people are ultimately going to be wrong to skip it, and may even regret it. If for no other reason, then the next featured is going to be really good for Battlegrounds decks. on me. Felt that one coming. Hey, Abajith. It does include Sam and Britain, that's for sure, Fred.
The other thing about features is I think that, in general, people save a little bit too much. Because people say things like, this crystal doesn't have anyone I really need. And then they save for the next feature. And by the time that one comes around, like, there's maybe one or two champions in the next next feature that they actually want, and everything else is a miss. And I just feel like when you save a lot, that's often how you end up with really disappointing openings, where you open like 15 crystals, and maybe one of them was your like second champion you wanted. I don't know, I'm, that's getting a little pessimistic. So it's not really fair of me. Don't freaking do this. All right, I guess I have to restart the stream now. One second, I'll be right back. Hey, y'all. Could be back now. Hey, Greenfield, true potential. But yeah, I just... I tend to err on the side of opening the featured we have, because ultimately that's going to build my roster. Now we get a stagger. Great, he's still blocked or he's still bugged. That second hit shouldn't have landed. I'm just so tired of Hood being broken. That was that one was on. Who in the next feature do I think is going to be great for Battlegrounds? Basically all of them. Craven has his trap thing, does a bunch of bleed damage. Um, also, the way that his, what is it called, like his perseverance, endurance, whatever, the thing that shortens bleeds and other, or the thing that st shortens stuns and other debuffs, that's going to help. Toad has that regen and prowess that demands an answer, has all those poisons, can stun poison immunes if you don't play him properly. Like, there's a lot going on there. Sauron can bleed you through block. All of his stuff is passive, so it's difficult to get around with mystics. It's difficult to get around with purify. He can do solid damage on attack and be difficult to kill on defense. Sam can turn abilities off, especially, uh, you know, through block being the big one, has auto block to keep his health up and to make him harder to kill. Um, he can do those ruptures through damage. He has the armor up. He has uh, the ability not to crit, so he counters certain dangerous defenders. Misty has evade and purify, making her difficult on defense but can also go permanently unblockable and kill very quickly on offense, both with raw damage and with the cold snap. Excuse me, off her special too. Captain Britain isn't going to be great for safeguard specifically, but she does have um, a few abilities that could be good on defense in future matchups, and she can do great damage on offense, and she also is yet another slow counter. Like, I really think that all of them are going to have a place. I think Captain Britain is probably the worst in Battlegrounds, but she's still going... I think she's also one of the best in general content. I just think you're wrong, Grenfell. I think you're very wrong, because Toad especially 
is quite good. If nothing else, you should be paying attention to him. Next, next, next featured will have Omega Sentinel. So, she's good. She's very good. She's not so good that I'm going to like completely blunt my account progression for five months until I can get her. I don't know. I think I'm just ex for me. It's about accepting the RNG aspect of the game. And knowing that no matter how many features I save and then open, I'm not guaranteed to get anyone. Like, look at this last one. I've pulled Nimrod three times, but I haven't pulled Kitty or Hype once. And I've opened a ton of them. You can always miss. The one before... Jabari was literally my last crystal. Penny was literally my last crystal. Like, my featured luck is so bad. <laughs> in the long run that I just saving isn't going to help that my odds are just as high as pulling extra punisher 2099 six which is something like that seems to keep happening to me and so passing on six good champions as well as whatever's in the sub featured or basic pool with them passing on six good champions for a slightly higher chance of another good champion doesn't excite me. I like the look of all six of the next ones. If the leaked feature I've seen is correct, then I also like the look of six or seven other champions that will be next to it. Even if that leak isn't correct, there probably will be other ones I care about. Like, I want to grow my roster and I want to grow it now. I don't want to wait four months and then just be sad. Because, yeah, PWF brings up another thing. Like, I don't know exactly how many features Clown has opened relative to me, but if he hasn't gotten Nimrod, <laughs> it's not guaranteed. Yeah, Toad is amazing in Battlegrounds, especially on offense. He's a Nick Fury cheat code. And he's difficult on defense as well. My prestige is fine, Grinfeld. The difference between Omega Sentinel and Nimrod does not matter outside of the top 10. Yeah, I won't post it here because, like, it's super, super unsubstantiated, um, so, like, don't get too into the leak. But the one I saw did have, like, I-Bomb, Ultron, Vision Arcus, Doom... Blade, a few others. Nothing that, like, would be game-changing to my account, but just, like, solid champions that I don't have. And for some people with smaller rosters, it'd be amazing. Uh, my Tigra is 200, beginning. This feature was great for me, kitty hype and null. <laughs> yeah, that's just how it goes. And that's kind of why I'm like, I'm planning on opening the next feature, because I'll get something out of it. Like, I probably won't get all six features, but I'll get one of them, most likely, and I'll figure out how to enjoy them. Hey, Snoops, how's it going? Eyebomb teases me already. <laughs> right? Uh, it depends too much on whatever the node is, Bulls. Like, Maw was amazing for masochism and will be good for safeguard, but not nearly as much so. Masochism was a, a big deal for him. Ugh. That's fine. 
I do need to work on the fancy special one of Aid with Tigra. I'm fine with the imperfect one, but... It would be nice to get a few more ruptures. They often have not been adding those champions to the basic troop potential yet. So all of those ones that they mentioned, both 5-star and 6-star, being added on the 19th is a big deal. The featured comes down to what your roster looks like. I don't think my roster needs any of those champs. I mean, that's fine. The SIG 200 thing especially is big. Um, like, my Doom isn't SIG 200, which also matters. I don't think, like... Yeah, I just really think it comes down to if there are a bunch of champions that you want in the basic, open basics. But, like, a lot of the old ones don't excite me, aren't ones that I would rank. And so for me, the feature just makes more sense. And I think long term, I do have slightly fewer six stars than some other people at my level because I haven't been opening basics. But my roster is still as strong as or stronger than a lot of those people who have more six stars outside of arena grinds because I've opened so many features and I have champions I enjoy and am good with. At the end of the day, it's a personal choice. Hey, Wayne, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, I'm very glad iPhones are water resistant. I was a fan. I've run into that before. Right, top rate? Right? And that's that's why I keep doing features. Even when it feels like I don't need a ton from them, the list of champions I need from the basic is not that long. They're champions I want from the basic. but not want badly enough uh, relative to the feature. <laughs> well, I'm thinking about like how like Slay has fewer rank... <sighs> That should have missed. He's supposed to have two guaranteed misses. Like, I know I'm just going to keep being annoyed by it, but it would be really nice if it worked as intended. Okay, the third one was not guaranteed, and I was too slow on the heavy release. That's my fault. But yeah, Slay has, like, I don't know, 32, 33 uh, rank 3s, but he also has, like, 20 more 6 stars than me. So, like, my roster, in terms of what I can bring to bear, is larger, but he's opened more 6 stars, he has a larger arena pool. I don't regret my decisions. Hey, Sam. Hype, Nimrod, other two new Cosmics. Nice. I mean, that's very solid. Thirty-two is... It's not... Like, I feel like Matt's making it sound like that's like 10th percentile, and it's not. But 32 out of the Masters Alliances probably is like, I don't know, 30th percentile, 40th. It's de maybe not 40th. 30th probably sounds about right. It's definitely below average. It's not embarrassing, because that's enough champions to use, but it is below average. I 
I think as far as expectations are, Matt, that really depends on how much your alliance expects you to wail out. 40 basically requires you to have spent a significant amount. I don't know what the average is at SSX, but it's also like really skewed. Like, like I said, I have 38. Um, I have the T5CC for another like seven, 10. God, I don't know. Um, but then we also have people like work who has like 65. It's a spread. But I do think people don't realize just how abundant it's been at the top because we have had people apply um, who want to get in, who have, like, 18 rank 3s, and that's, like, it's not that those people aren't good enough, but that is not a lot of flexibility for war. Because 18 rank 3s, if you assume all of them are perfectly chosen and there are absolutely no duds, you're probably going to want at least two of them to run map 8, so now we're down to 16. You need 5 on defense, so now we're down to 11. And out of those 11, odds are at least 2 or 3 more are going to be defenders, and so we're down to like 8, and then it's... Are those 8 going to be unique? Are they going to be useful? Or is that going to be enough for you to really contribute to the BG? It, it's just hard. Work is a different breed relative to most that you know, Snoops. He's not that weird in the top alliances. Yeah, like, I bet that 4 Loki has at least 5 people with 60 rank 3s. And there are other alliances that are significantly more whaley than 4 Loki. You grind a lot and you've spent some top rank. You haven't, like, relative to people who are free to play, you have spent a significant amount top rank. No, it doesn't feel like that to you because you've seen the whales that we have, but yeah, you you count on that. That surprised me. Oh, right, she gets the auto evade when you miss. Yeah, I know. Clean for five months doesn't negate what you did before that, though. Like, my spending wouldn't even show up on a graph next to Works or Clowns or Usapas. I've still absolutely spent a significant amount. Yeah, Matt. That's the kind of thing. It doesn't mean that those people are automatic no's. They can absolutely be assets. But the planning is just harder around smaller rosters. Antivenom's really solid executioner. If you haven't seen any of Simula's stuff on him, check that out.
Yeah, Sam, that makes sense. I don't know why she didn't evade there. There we go. Alright, hey, one more stun. Come on. The hitbox on that grappling hook feels like some serious BS. Alright. Got the hunt. What I needed. Can I get another heavy? Nope. That's fine. Did a lot of damage. And she's almost out of combo shields. That's what matters. Oh, I haven't seen that yet, Aiden. But yeah, I've been impressed by Anti-Venom. I've thought since he came out that there was something to him, a build-your-own-utility. But I wasn't sure where it stacked up, especially because my lens for so much is war. It really feels like with Karina's challenges and more people getting him uh, and seeing how he works in 7.4 as well, his stock is going up, and that makes me happy. Alright, one more hunt. Oh, and she'll be stunned automatically. So, boom, heavy. I love Jabari so much. I mean, yeah, Executioner, there's a lot you can do without spending. But also, 9 just wouldn't get you into a Master's Alliance, period. Because that's... By the time you... Remember, if you go back to what I said earlier, by the time you take off your defenders and who you're using in AQ, you're out of rank 3s to attack with. But I don't think it's at all weird to have 20 without spending, if you've been playing for a bit longer. And like I said, that number has some challenges... But it also can work fine. Three Abyss of Legend solos at rank one is huge. Yeah, that speaks very highly of Anti Venom. That makes sense, Aiden. Thirty at rank two is impressive, PWF. I wouldn't mind some more of those myself. Right, man. I'm just speaking to trend lines. We'll get two nullifies off this. That's what we need.
That's good, execution. Haven't spent much Siphon Sigil, Unicard, one too often since August. Yeah, Cyber Weekend's a big one. A rank 3 Anti Venom Unawakened. I mean, as long as you love him, I really think that his kit relies a lot on his Awakened ability, though. Yeah, Matt. I I know exactly what you mean. I I hope they do something. Like every time I go through the math, I feel like their their numbers are their numbers make sense if you never die, and that's where it stops. Like, those numbers are fine for chip damage. Those numbers are fine for, like, oh, yeah, I got hit once and I healed back up. This I only need this many potions. I can still buy boosts. The moment you die, your entire allowance of items for your season just, like, falls out from under you. And I just, I don't know how they came... No, I do know how they came up with that, because they're using the stupid, like, aggregated data, and they're like, ah, eh, people in Tier 1 don't heal up. Yes, they do. And they should have the loyalty available to do that, because otherwise you are effectively kicking out hundreds of people from Tier 1 unless they pay a tax of hundreds of units per season. And that's stupid. It like will destroy the game mode if that's what they stick to. That, ah, well, you know, we'll just... Tier 1 players need to learn to survive on the same number of items that Tier 4 players use, and then they'll be fine. No, that's stupid. Uh, it's okay. I, I'm happy to be pointed on this, Matt, because they just they're not making sense. Um, I don't know if any of you saw I don't know if any of you saw my post on this, but I linked um DNA's post on the forums where he makes a pretty compelling argument. A pretty compelling argument that reviving too full should be automatic and free. Because then you're not monetizing participation. You're just monetizing competition by making it you have to spend resources on potions and boosts to heal to full and stay alive. Because once you've died, you've already given points. And so, like, I do like that. It's not going to happen as it is, because if endless reviving were free, like, then Kabam would basically be subsidizing people playing poorly. And we know that's not going to happen. But imagine if they left loyalty and potions and all of that basically exactly where it is right now. But every war, the first time and only the first time you died, you revived all the way to full for free. How much pressure would that take off? from your potion stash for this season. Like, maybe you still die more than once a war, fine, but most, the vast majority of your potions would be going to topping up. Because people in Tier 1 aren't supposed to die more than once per war anyway. And I feel like that would instantly have it make more sense. And you could do something like the inverse of the bands, where maybe as you go further down in wars, you get a few more um, auto-revives. Like, maybe Tier 5 gets, like, three of them per war or something. But I I really think that that would actually do it. And I don't think it would cost Kabam that much, because if you're out there dying five times per war, you're still going to have to spend on revives, you're still going to have to spend to heal to full, you're probably still going to item out. And even if you only die once or zero times, you're still probably spending on boosts and potions. And, like, the economy would still work that way. Anyone who gets hit more often than not, anyone who tries to use face-taking as, um, as a strategy would have to pay more in potion. It would work out. Grinfeld, uh, I will, like, back up on chat. I do my best to catch those things, but I'm not always going to respond to comments, especially, like, I just read your last one. That's basically just, like, a joke, right? Like, yeah, we know that rank 4 boosted APOC has a lot of health. I'm not always going to stop in the middle of what I'm saying to read them. I will go back to them.
Don't give up on war just yet, Kabir. Because I also think it's really important to remember that, like, compensation is still here for the next season, and they've already made a big stride with this change. And they've committed to further tuning. There will be more things that happen. War is not dead yet. We just need to see where they go with it. Like, I don't think anybody needs to be making big decisions just yet. Right, Steve. The compensation will stop. But the point is that because compensation has not stopped yet, there's time for this to be fixed. That's what I mean. Yeah, exactly, Sam. Like, topping off a loan can be costly enough. If you're taking 10 fights of war, then, like, the current amount of loyalty potions wouldn't be enough. You would end up buying potions. So then, like, even if you have the one free revive... Well, that's actually the other thing. One free revive per war, per person, also encourages spreading out the load more. Because there are some alliances that, especially in the Age of Compensation, rely on one or two people per battle group taking 10, 11 fights per war as their default. Because right now they can without dipping into a bunch of units. And those people can even die once or twice, and it's not that big a deal. But if Compensation is gone, everybody gets one free revive to full, and now... Top potions being used to top off, boosts being more spread around based on loyalty becomes more important, then you have a built-in incentive to have alliances spread fights out more, to have more people take closer to five fights so that they are more able to top up, so they're more able to boost, so that there's less risk of one person dying three or four times in a war and completely destroying their season stash. And the thing is that I think that that itself is still, like, that's a good thing to build into war. When alliances have to be more equitable, planning has to be better, matchups have to be better, and alliances have to be deeper. You can't just rely on your studs because there's unlimited compensation. I don't know. Just talking out loud for that one, reading a bit more. People complaining, saying about compensation, let's remove it. Yeah, they absolutely did have to give us the compensation. And when things get better, the top players in Tier 1 will also probably get hit less. A big chunk of SSX's deaths last season were, sorry guys, my block didn't work. And like, with video to back up that assertion. So, things will get both better and worse when compensation stops. It's... Yeah. I don't think the system is there, but I feel like the conversation is ongoing, and it is an improvement, and I'm not willing to give up on war just yet. Thanks, Dads. I appreciate that. Yeah, APOC has a ton of health. Uh, Matt, I probably used... Four or five regens last season. Maybe six. But I felt like maybe one of them was warranted, which I think is what you're getting at. Yeah, I understand, Kabir. It's, I think a lot of people are kind of in a holding pattern with war right now. I love it, so I don't want to give it up, but this doesn't feel sustainable. Oh, that sounds interesting. Your potential degrees to semifinals. I mean, right champs, that's the problem, Steve, is that, like, yes, you can use champions that regen to mitigate the problem, but those aren't always, those aren't always good matchups, and they aren't always safe. So, like, I do think that with potions being more scarce, you would see more, like, Claire over Doom or more Diablo, more champions that can regen within the fight 
you'd see more damage mitigation. You'd see more Killmonger over Mole Man because all of a sudden the indestructible charges, the block proficiency, the armor, the crit resistance arguably matters a bit more. Like, I do think things would change. You might see less Nick Fury as well. The meta would change, but I... Because of how complicated war is, you can't just say, eh, everybody start using your King Groots and you'll be fine. So there... There is still more that needs to change in the item. Um, there is still more that needs to change in the item economy, I believe. Oh, are you talking about this true potential? That's just the sigil boost. Don't worry about it. I'm not wasting items or anything. Hey, Jelly, how's it going? Yeah, I don't think that people taking longer for fight to play safer is at all a bad thing, Matt. Um, especially with the way the tiebreaker is right now. Like, that builds more choices into war. Choices are a good thing. But it's still, like, it needs to... It needs to not suddenly feel like you have to pay a tax of hundreds of units just to participate. And we're not there yet, because their system makes sense if you never die. But it falls apart the minute you do. And that that's why I really, as much as I seriously doubt it gets implemented, I feel like the auto-revive thing really would solve a lot. Like, make it so tiers one, make it so that, like, make it map dependent. So everybody on the, uh, the expert map, tier one and two, gets, like, one free revive. Um, maps three through, tiers three through five on the challenger map get, like, two free revives to pull, something along those lines, you would still have plenty of spending, but I think or would... One of the things that compensation removed from a lot of people, that's kept a lot of people playing war instead of stepping down, compensation removed that fear that if I die once... I'm going to burn through all of my 6k potions, healing a single champion, and then I'm going to get roadblocked. I'm going to item out, I'm not going to be able to help out the Alliance, I'm going to have to quit because I feel like the worst team member in the world. That's a part of war that I don't really want to see come back. Because it sucks. Like, there are people for any given Alliance who just cannot hang. But I don't think the potion economy should be what determines that. If you're dying too much and you're costing your alliance wars, that's what should determine that you can't hang. That's what should get you kicked. Not like, I'm sorry guys, I don't have enough units and so I keep using small potions so I'm iteming out. I'm sorry I can't finish the map. Like that's, it's a little too classist for me. <laughs> I really wish there was a timer on his stupid ability. I probably should have been a little bit more careful, it had been a while. That was annoying. Yeah, Steve, I, I understand. I've been down in those lower alliances. I, I do know what the death totals look like.
But that kind of disparity is exactly why I think Kabam is interpreting their data incorrectly. I think they are smoothing things over between tiers more than is justified. Because you don't need to be fully subsidizing the lengths to which Tier 1 players have been going the last few seasons with full comp and what feels like unlimited gray boosts. But I think you should subsidize their ability to exist. And then you can monetize their desire to win. That's the distinction I want to see them making, and I don't feel like the current system does that. Plus, as far as subsidizing goes, it's not like we get this stuff for free. What I'm suggesting is that they allow us to sustainably earn these things. It's a pretty big difference. I really hate how Goblin blunts Mystic Dispersion. But I should have just given up and gone straight to the special three earlier. That's my fault. I actually was trying to dash back. I didn't mean to throw that special too, I missed. They love you. I don't know. I feel like micromanaging the compensation isn't really worth it. I have no issue with how they've handled it throwing out that much. It's also, like, boosted some lower accounts. It's let you open more AQ crystals, get more resources. Like, it's it's fine. It really is compensation for the game not feeling great. For progression in all areas being stunted. I don't think it's at all inappropriate. If you end up selling them, well, it helps the gold economy. Why did I do that? I know that his heavy is not safe to counter. Because I'm talking. No, oh, I knew I was too close for that too. Alright. No, oh, that's gonna send us red. <laughs> that's fine. There we go, that's the distance. Do that more often. Kool-Aid man? <laughs> Always five, Jelly. I'm a big believer in Max Mystic Dispersion. I firmly believe that the times when it sends you past the special you want to use are more than outweighed by the times in which it gives you a special you otherwise would not have been able to use.
It does take some getting used to, but, you know, that's what practice is for. interesting Sarah Ghost, but it also, to some extent, is an ability that Purgatory has. Not exactly the way in which you're defining it, but the fact that she can expend her own power for something other than specials gives her more control over which special she's using than a lot of Mystics. There's so much in that kit that is almost amazing. She is almost one of my favorite mystics. She just needs a little bit more. I look forward fondly to her buff. throw that, but that's fine. Lots of damage. Under Mother was considering Purgatory? Interesting. I absolutely would have gone Purgatory over Guillotine. It would not have been close. Whoops, I wasn't expecting him to throw that. Yeah, Sarah Ghost. I love playing her, but it would be a bit of a luxury rank up at the moment. He's a gilly diehard. I can respect that. I would rather have Purgatory at rank 4 and Guillotine at rank 3, because they synergize so well together. But I suppose... If Guillotine's her favorite character, then rank 4 Guillotine and rank 3 Purgatory works pretty well, too. So, not the end of the world. Yeah, let's do this with Kingpin this time. Yeah, she's way up there, Sarah Ghost. I don't know why I tried to punish that earth. Why is she not evading? Thought that was supposed to happen on an intercept. There we go. Finally did. Very weird. Okay. Getting more comfortable with that. You don't have to dex twice. You just have to dex the... Uh... Grappling hook. Of 
course, I'm still going to mess it up even times, even knowing how it works. Hopefully not too many times. that close, then you do need to do both. Okay, there's new ones to it. Right, simple enough. It is a pretty long cleanse. The fact that it's only one kind of outweighs it. You have to expend power to get it, so I feel like it's very fair, but it's an interesting ability for sure. I bring him up all the time as an example of that Saragost. <laughs> hey man, Masakre. To be fair, Saragost, like... When small numbers change, it is very difficult for people without a deep understanding of the game to truly process how much that matters. Because, like, Reed and Masakre, it mattered a lot. Gamora, it mattered a lot. Um, Psycho Man, I do think it mattered a lot. Nova, it was stupid. I stand by that. I don't care that he hits moderately hard. His kit needed more. It wasn't a good kit that was just missing a slightly stronger fury if it, it needs more. But like, I understand why the immediate reaction is it's not enough. Or more accurately, I understand why it's difficult to realize the difference between it being enough and not being enough. But yeah, I do wish people would exercise a little bit more caution before coming to conclusions. Angela is not on that list at all, Aiden. They added a lot of utility to her. I think Moleman and Terak Terax got more than a little bit as well. Uh, Sam, I believe the, the 4 to 7 was just because I used the special 2. Because while you're unstoppable, um, hits give you more rage. I wasn't paying attention. Throw this before. Okay, yes. Good. I wanted the Bile of Might. I swear I tried to dodge that. Alright. Yeah, hopefully forever takes the cake. Yeah, the damage over time stuff, the auto block stuff, none of that was in her kit. She, they also gave her the ability to parry projectiles. That wasn't in there before either, Aiden. Angela got a big rework. Also, to answer your question, my kingpin is SIG 20. I do think they'll fix Mole Man Cyber. I can't explain why they haven't fixed him yet, but I do think they'll fix him. Just too egregious.
Hood feels so good to play when things are going right. God, that was nice. <laughs> No discussion of his rebuff? That's because it basically wasn't there, Kabir. Like, it's really bad. I put a lot of work into Nova um, on my alt account, and also the six star I have on this account, trying to make him work, and it just made me like him less. Because, yes, he can do decent damage. But not relative to other Cosmics. He has to jump through so many more hoops to just be okay. And he's a champion that is clearly built around dashing forward and backward and intercepting the opponent. But he actually is worse when you're intercepting. Because his kit is based on distance traveled. And that means that if you catch the opponent by intercepting them, you haven't traveled as far because they came to you as well, and so you get fewer charges and less power. Which means that the optimal, the optimal way to play Nova is actually to parry, dash back, and dash forward. Which is such a huge flavor fail, I just cannot get over it. That alone, I, I hate, hate his kit. I do think Civil Warrior could use another look, but not a huge one. Um, the thing that I keep hearing from his fans is that his dashback and block ability is not as clean as the way Falcons was reworked. So giving him that alone might be enough. I've also heard it's fairly stressful to keep up his, um... His Furies, so I don't know if it would be unfair for those to be a little bit longer, but it doesn't seem like it to me. I think Mole got more than Numbers Tweaks, Aiden, if I remember correctly. Like, it's been a long time, but I think that one in particular was more than Numbers. Yeah, I understand that, Saragos. MP Blaze enjoys Civil Warrior, but he's not going to defend him as, like, a great champion. But when MP likes somebody, that convinces me they're not a failure. MP was um, one of the two people who turned me on to giving Ronin a real look, and he was absolutely right there. So I believe that Civil Warrior is fine, but he's definitely not great. Hey, Bricard, did the Mutant Domination Challenge yesterday, did Path 5 of this, took Boy 2 Revives, 2 Team Revives. Nice! And it sounds like very few potions based on uh, that synergy. Congrats, man. Super solid. Yeah, I, ha I have an old Nova buff idea as well, Sarah Ghost. <laughs> One of these days I may even actually make the video on it, but... When I tried to a while ago, it just kind of ended up as me ranting. 
I talk enough. I don't need to lean into that further. to the heavy late. Alright, that's that. Love Ronin. Wish I had a SIG 206 star one. Yeah, I really thought that his SIG wasn't helpful. I've already forgotten who convinced me of it the other day in chat, but yeah, I... I'm a believer on his SIG now as well, just in places. But I like him a lot. He's still my top champion on my alt. Hundred-ish potions. Okay, well then you farmed adequately. Oh. Ranked up Mysterio, very nice. One second, Sam, I will get to that. What are my thoughts on which took years to rank four? Been using her in war she's very powerful i think that her ceiling is really really high and that she is a very good champion i think there are a lot of places where she's too risky for most people and what i mean by that is the fact that like she doesn't always prioritize the unblockable to nullify we ran into this yesterday on stream where i was taking the resistor path and because the resistor the last resistor buff had almost always come up after the unblockable. I couldn't parry to remove the unblockable. I would just get hit in the face and it would um, nullify one of the resistor buffs, which is not enough. Combine that with, like, any champion with a difficult-to-deck special that gets unblockable right as they throw it or in the middle of it, it's just dangerous. Like, yeah, theoretically you can parry specials, but... As opposed to somebody like Guardian, or even Purgatory, honestly, where there's upside to parrying, for her, it's like there's a small upside to parrying, but the downside to missing the window and actually blocking it is really, really bad. So I think that she's a very good champion, but I think that she has quite a few weaknesses when it comes to... Um, when it comes to using her and really exacting content like war and so i think that my attitude on her is kind of similar to tigra or even on some level someone like omega red where it's like i would be willing to path her in war but it would need to be somebody who had done a lot of work with them in an off season who i trusted with her and who i was working with to set up the paths because i just i would not just trust her to be like oh yeah just go take that lane in place of doom i can see a lot of people dying with her very quickly if they haven't put enough work into her
But, like, you wouldn't take a Punisher 2099 with her, would you, Sam? Because that's one where, like, even if you say yes, I'm not sending that to you. There are a lot of things I would be happy to send her to. <laughs> but not that. According to Seton's original video. Um, that does sound like only numbers, but yeah, you're right. That is an awful lot of numbers being changed. No, not a Punisher. Okay, as long as we're on the same page there. Yeah, I do think she's very good. I'm just not going to assign her to everyone. Not that crazy. <laughs> Yeah, leave the Punisher 99s to read. So I can just cause everything to miss. Or evade. He was not being very nice. Sure, just keep blocking. This will take longer. You're still going to lose. Thank you. You really wish her special two damage accounted for immunities? Like, it, would, it wouldn't try to apply incinerate if they were incinerate immune. It would stick to poison or cold snap. Is that what you mean, Saragos? Because that, that does sound like a nice upgrade. I feel like it's flavorful for that to be one of her weaknesses, that it's like, oops, I wasn't completely in control of the magic, I actually, I accidentally tried to burn Ghost Rider. It makes sense to me, but I understand what you mean. Like, it is a bit of an annoying weakness. Dang it. I really want my Jabari duped. Just an extra second on the hunt would so often be a really big deal. Like, she does fine. 
But this fight would be over now if we had doubled enough of those bleeds. <laughs> it's okay, Sam. I may not respond to them immediately, but I will watch them. Thanks, man. Gotta head out. Take care, man. Tempted to take my Jabari to save 100, only one counterpunch. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm very jealous of Meta's uh, Sig 200 rank 4. I feel like she really would scale well. Yeah, Meta has used his Jabari on Hazard Ship this offseason too. And I've been meaning to watch that, uh, that MP video. She's awesome. She doesn't necessarily, like, make up for a lot that Kingpin lacks. But she's great, and she hits really hard, and the cleanse is pretty darn reliable. Plus, she slots into other teams that matter. Like, I saw that he used her with Silver Centurion, right? Who can take the second hazard shift path. Really great. Big fan. Please throw this, I don't want you to go red on me. Eh, I wasn't ready for it, even though I asked him to throw it. There we go. Come on, dude, don't wait out my senses. You jerk. Hey, Divine. Just finished 6.4, pulled Archangel and Cersei. Very nice, congrats. Been saving my Romance gem, should I use it on either of them? As much as I love Cersei, I think that Archangel is one of the easiest um, uses of the Romance gem. I think I would do that in a heartbeat. I might be sad about it, but yeah, I would definitely do that. Erknoll and Kitty are all great, but there are a few things in this game like an Awakened Archangel. Uh, I was even warned there was a bishop. Did not prepare for it. See if we can get through this. Tigra, don't fail me now. Dang it. Oop, that might do it. needed one more light attack there. In case anyone was wondering, that's what it looks like when I take a tiger fight the first time ever on stream. <laughs> Ugh. I'm so glad she's high sig at rank 3. Yeah, I understand that, Sarah Ghost. Hey, Bean and Fell. How's it going? Always the last path of a quest when you play the absolute worst. Oh, don't put that evil into the air, Cyber. This isn't my last path. I have one more.
Oops. That's gonna hurt. Might as well hit him a few times while we're here. Alright, we at least made sure he didn't have a fury up. Yeah, it was based on the just the two of us crystal, but I still don't think that it makes any sense to have Nolan there. I think he was there to, to sell crystals, and that's it. I'll meet the gym again. Uh, I enjoyed the first episode, Aaron. Um, haven't watched the second one yet. I believe that's on the docket for today. When I finished my arena grind and my girlfriend finished a number of her exams and projects, we actually binged Bridgerton on Thursday. Or sorry, Wednesday and Thursday instead of Moon Knight. But we will be handling that today, I'm sure. Love running into Doom Special 2 with Kitty. <laughs> yeah, those kinds of things are really fun with her. Aries. Okay. That was the evade. That's fair. when you rank three or to have a good skill option if you pull a skill option or if you pull a skill three four to gem but end up wanting to rank four anyway yeah i really like jabarin finished peacemaker yeah that's on my list as well finally got a solo on scorpion and cap nice man congrats I know Diablo is better for this fight, but I want to use Tigra. Tigra. Okay. No power gain for you. Ah, I dashed backwards quickly. There we go. Now no power game. Okay, there's a bit of Nova in that. I need to practice that. There's absolutely timing on the special one that makes it perfectly safe. That's just not what I did. Hate not having energy? What you mean? Yeah, I know what you mean, uh, Sarah Ghost. I think even if I get the 10k by then, I am tempted to wait anyway.
No, Cyber. Um, Tiger specials are unblockable on a, like, hit-by-hit hit basis. There are a few point the It checks for both hits of the special one and for three different hits of the special two based on how far away she is as those hits get launched. And they do not go unblockable if she's under the effects of, what is it, weakness, slow, or concussion? There's one other. Now that I've started talking about it, I'm looking it up. But the alphabet is hard. This is why I always just filter by class. Mystic. Oh, I did it again. It's not that the alphabet is hard. It's that I had my Aunt May sorted by release, and that's why I wasn't finding Tiger near the end. It keeps happening. Weakness, slow, or exhaustion. That's the other. Finding it hard to resist ranking up Strife. <laughs> yeah, he's really solid. A lot of fun to play if he does appeal to you. Thoughts on the attribute system? Um, I think that it is very good at what it's doing, which is giving a rough idea of what Kabam is aiming for with a champion for endgame players and giving lower players a look into how they will add to their roster. I do not think that the purpose of it is at all to try and accurately distill the sum total of a character's kit or how they line up with a bunch of different matchups. And I do not think it is meant to give an accurate description of how a character works in Endgame War, which seems to be how a lot of Endgame players are trying to interpret it and then finding it lacking and getting angry. But that's not its purpose. For its purpose, I think it does great. What's the difference between exhaustion and fatigue? Basically the difference between... Whoops. Stopped paying attention. Exhaustion is to cruelty as fatigue is to precision. Um, exhaustion affects crit damage. Fatigue affects crit rate. If you need more on that, happy to help. Um, after the fight. Oops, did not get the hunt. Still good damage. God, this fight would be so much easier if I had counter punch charges. you to throw that. I'm serious. I want you to throw that. Dang it. Sabotage. Okay. Well, at least this works. Turning off my defensive abilities, I just won't use any of them. I know it says it does for a lot of characters. I assumed it was poison sand. Oh, whoops. I find it lacking when they have She-Hulk is more sustainable than Warlock. I don't know, man. There are, like... There are just always going to be things to critique. And I just, I don't think that that's a terribly... useful way of engaging with it. 
it's just not meant for us. Like, if you have enough of a, if you have enough of a grasp of this game to go through their system and critique the ratings and say, like, well, that's not true because of XYZ, and this isn't true because of XYZ, if you are capable of arguing with the rankings, the rankings aren't for you, almost by definition. <laughs> and so, I, I don't know. I just feel like it's not worth it for me to engage with them that way. So exhaustion does not actually have um, that secondary effect. I used to think it was like that, and I made the exact comparison to poison and incinerate that you did. Except that Betty's doesn't do that. Everyone else who has exhaustion does, but, uh, sorry, Etsy. Eh, Betty. But yeah, Captain Britain's exhaustion does not reduce ability power rate. And I asked about that specifically, and I was told that the designer made the choice not to include that secondary effect, presumably because it would give her utility in a spot that they didn't want to give her utility and potentially would make her too strong in certain spots. I don't know. Um, it's hard to know exactly what they were going for there. It's hard. Maybe the... What was it that I said here? It may be that because she already has access to a fairly strong Energize, right? If I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, she has a 30% Energize buff for 15 seconds. So the issue may have been that if you combine that with... Um, reducing ability power rate on the opponent and possibly even reversing it because of how she can apply it when she blocks critical hits and then you take into account how much her specials are a part of her kit then the possibility of her just chaining special after special in certain matchups where the opponent couldn't really do anything may have worried the designer enough to scale that back that's kind of my guess but before she came out, I did think that it had that secondary effect, yes. Because Luke's exhaustion, She-Hulk's exhaustion, Miguel's exhaustion, all three of them do that. Betsy is the only exception. Luke, She-Hulk, and Miguel are the ones with it in their kit, and all of them reduce ability power rate. Although Luke's and She-Hulk's are, I believe, both by, what, 30%? And Miguel's is only 15 so we did have precedence for the potency being variable. I guess one way you can think about it is that the potency on Betsy's is just zero. It's not lying, Aiden. It is, I'm sorry, I think that's overstating it, man. Like, you don't have to ascribe a bad motive to it. It's not lying, it's them seeing She-Hulk's various damage mitigation abilities. The fact that she has exhaustion, the fact that she has taunt, the fact that she has petrify, as um, giving her more of an edge than Warlocks. I don't agree with that. Clearly you don't. It doesn't mean they're lying. Yeah, She-Hulk's exhaustion does reduce power rate, top rate. Going 
I reached for the special button. Missed. Okay, but there's a big difference between misleading and lying, Aiden. Like, I, I realize this probably is coming across as a bit pedantic, but, like, I do think that it's worth making a distinction between those two words if we're, um, if we're trying to have a real discussion about whether this is a helpful system for people or not. I don't know. Again, I don't agree with that particular one. I do think that is one of the more egregious, probably, errors. But I still think, like, you're getting across a lot of what you need to do from that. I don't know, man. It's really, it's hard for me to really, because there's no truly objective thing on this, because it's impossible for me to take myself fully out of my perspective, which is someone who's been playing this game for seven years, thinking deeply about kits, how they fit together, class relationships, who's been playing high tier of war, who's done all of the released content except the very end of 7.4, which just came out. Like, it is impossible for me to remove myself from that position and come at this truly as a new player. And I think that's probably true for you too, Aiden. It's difficult for you to tr take yourself entirely out of your perspective. And so it's hard to know how helpful that is or isn't to new players. And maybe, like, we know a lot of the people at Kabam do play. We also know absolutely beyond a doubt an awful lot of them do not play at a high level. Maybe some of them are playing at a level where that makes sense. Seems odd to me, because I agree that Warlock's um, armor and his higher block proficiency and his ability to heal on his special three does make for an overall more sustainable kit than She-Hulk, so it confuses me. But I don't think any difference that of one point or less is not something that I'm willing to get bent out of shape over. I think that that's close enough. Like, neither of them are a five, and that's correct. Not sure how to respond to that, Mago. Um, but I guess thanks. There it goes. So here's a follow-up. If the potency of exhaustion is variable, unlike poison or incinerate, when you look at negative special one, which doesn't specify what potency is that? That's a darn good question, Sarah Ghost. I would have... There was a time when I would have assumed the default potency was 30%, because that's what She-Hulk has, that's what Luke has. And I thought that Spider-Man 2099 was an intentional deviation because he also has access to Wither and because he can easily stack and pause five of them. So my instinct would be 30%, but I'm not. Hey, Pop Images, how's it going? Hey, Bella. Uh, Five-star thing is good, but Pop Images is correct that... Well... 
let me say this. Depending on the size of your account, Thing can be valuable in that he is a bleed immune, armor break immune, nullify immune brute. All three of those things are true. Without the dupe, that's good. He is decent for both attack and defense. Ultimately, you do kind of want him at max sig because that makes him much better on defense and also unlocks a few extra abilities on offense. But I think that's the best way to think of him on his base, is just armor break immune, nullify immune, bleed immune. If that's what you need in a path, things your guy. I think a scale of 1 to 10 is more appropriate. I suppose so, but I think they are trying to intentionally keep it simple. Like, I think a scale of 1 to 10 might even invite or disagreement and could end up getting toxic. I think they're trying to keep it as close to baseball cards as they can, which are inherently and by design reductive. Your best champs, 5 star rank 3 spider ham. Then Thing is probably adding something to your roster. He's probably not going to be a go to because he's relatively slow by a lot of standards, but. He's solid. Like, he'll, in case you aren't familiar with this, he'll help you answer um, nodes like Buffet or Power Snack, because both of those function off Nullify and he's immune to it. So he can be very helpful for you there. Um, I'm trying to think of other examples off the top of my head. He's very good against Man Thing because he's immune to the poisons because they only happen on a nullify, Thing's a solid champion. They have 0.5, so it defeats the purpose. Well, if they have 0.5s, then why are you asking for it to be on 1 to 10? <laughs> Isn't that the same thing? Yeah, like what, what Toffrey's saying. What's the difference there, man? You only have four five stars, no six stars. That's fine, Bella. You gotta start somewhere. Symbiote Supreme, Squirrel Girl, Thing, and Spider Ham. That is not a bad... That's not a bad first uh, four five stars. So Squirrel Girl is going to take a fair amount to learn. Um, she is not a simple starter champ, but there's a fair number of abilities there that really can help you. Check out Vega's channel, uh, Vega of MCOC. I think he has some early Squirrel Girl stuff that might be interesting to you. Unless you've already put a lot of work into her, in which case, I don't know, I'm talking to the wind. But Symbiote Supreme is awesome. Um, I have a few things on my channel for him, but it's all borrowed footage other than when I did the Come Out to Play Abyss challenge. But that Come Out to Play Abyss challenge does involve me talking to Tafre about how to play him, so there is some insight there. Those fights are timestamped if you want to go to his fight specifically. We talked about why Thing is good, and, and I love Spider-Ham. He's awesome. His whole numbers look nicer. I don't know. I think that there's something to be said about the point fives because it makes it feel like a nuance thing as opposed to changing the scale. I don't know that that makes any sense, but... I'm not sure that that's objective, is how I'll say that. Well, this makes me wish I'd brought Dragon Man instead of Hood. Oh well, we're here. Those are really solid 4 stars to rank 2, Bella. Yeah, it sounds like you've got some... some sweet stuff going on in your account thus far. Love the ability accuracy on the hex, allowing me to hit a few times. He did just flat out catch me with that light attack. That wasn't fun. I 
needed to pause. That's okay. This has been such a weird fight. <laughs> but that was expected. I feel like it's futzing with my dexes, though. Not make me happy. Three four gem on Corvus. Nice. Congrats, Pop Images. That's that's a serious weapon you have. Guillotine twenty ninety nine was one of the four stars that I ranked up too, Bella. That's awesome. Thanks, BK. Take care, Bella. Cannot tell you how many times I've talked myself out of rank two hood. He's quite good, I just... That was not at all an ideal fight for him. Gampo used his rank 3 a bit this season. I say a bit, it was just one fight. But it was a good fight, and it... Um, it added some real flexibility to his kingpin over some of the rest of ours, so... Fun times. Dexing AI. I can support that Sarah Ghost. I actually, I very much like Hood's uh, signature ability. is my next rank 3 mystic unless I fall Tigra. Yeah.
do I effectively play around his bullets? I make sure to make them miss a lot, and I don't rely on him for more than two or three fights. Honestly. I also use him more for his utility than for his damage. I think that's one of the biggest things, is that people, like... He works great as a nuke. But that's not his only purpose. Um, and I think that sometimes people get too hung up on the bullets and running out of them and thinking like, oh my god, I have no damage. Okay, but what you have left is somebody with passive staggers, a passive fate and seal, 65% ability accuracy reduction, easy openings due to invisibility, power steal, stun immunity, like... If you run out of bullets, which is never permanent because you always get them back when the opponent misses, if you run out of bullets, you're still going to be doing fine. Yeah, Aaron. Exactly. The bullets are secondary. They gave him nuke potential. The important things are his utility. Like, that Darkhawk fight took forever, and I still didn't run out. It's not that bad. Although, again, the bug that causes his second hit to not be a guaranteed miss is that bad, and it drives me insane. Whoops. Again, only one guaranteed miss. Ah, <sighs> frustrating. I really hope they fix that soon. Remember to go invisible before throwing special two? Remind me why, Aaron. Um, I am not a hood expert. Yeah, I, I do think that's a good point as well, Sarah Ghost. Like, you want to use him as a mystic. Remember that he is a mystic. And use him in buff matchups. And things work better. You get the permanent invisibility? Okay, hold on. When you say permanent, do you just mean uptime? Do you just mean 100% uptime, or what? Because I'm... Is there a bug that gives the invisibility actual permanence? I'm not seeing that in the kit. Okay, just the two timers. Okay, so you are talking about 100% uh, uptime. Yeah, it was occurring to me I could manage that better. Appreciate the reminder. Taking Mole Man along is rarely a bad thing. That's true. that grappling hook early. Late isn't the end of the world. It's bad. 
Okay, that's fine. Oops, I... okay, that counts. That counted. Okay, finally killed the combo. I think at this point we're just going for the special three that'll give us the hunt and stun. Plus we couldn't keep the sabotage off us, so I'm not about to try and uh, stun for the heavy. This will work. Take care, Aiden, and good luck on the grind, man. Gotcha. Okay, fair point, Saragos. That's, yeah, that's a good reminder. Scorpion or Black Cat going to be decent defenders? Yeah. Maybe not amazing, but both of them are going to be at least okay. Scorpion in particular, with that um, evade chance and the ability to do things through block... Black Cat, I think so, but I don't know that in war or in battlegrounds the fights are going to go on long enough um, for her to put the sabotage on you, so I'm less sure on her. That'll kind of remain to be seen, in my opinion. Yeah, Tafre, I'm saving my keys for the Sig Stones as well. All right, well, we have one chapter left, which, if I wasn't feeling fatigued, I would do, because my um, Odin will actually be on cooldown, but maybe I'll do that later before joining AQ. For now, though, I'm definitely going to call the stream here. I was going to make a video on the potion thing, and for those of you who saw my post, you know, I just... Uh, it wasn't feeling right. I felt like anybody who was actually willing to listen to me talk about that at any length probably comes to my streams or watches them back later anyway. So I decided not to make that, but that meant that I didn't have anything this morning. I'm going to try and set up releases for this coming week, because I'll actually be traveling a bit. I'm hoping to be able to stream while I'm in DC, but I definitely want to get my videos set up for the week before I go. But thanks everybody for... Oh, sorry, last um, thing. So no, they do not have relevant defense tactics yet because they don't really do that with brand new defenders pop images. They probably will in the future. Okay, well with that, thanks everybody for hanging out. Always appreciate it, and I'll see you soon. Take care.